Let's say you accept the fact that peak oil is here and that Asia and China are going to use as much fossil fuels as they can to uh, advance technologically. That means basically that you have to pretty quickly find an alternative to oil. And uh, until now we basically kept being kept in the dark, there's just been a game going on and uh, people have been talking about the hydrogen economy and that's all very good because hydrogen creates no uh, greenhouse gas emissions, none whatsoever. And if we could all burn only hydrogen, that would be great, because everything that burns is a danger for climate change. Everything that burns, all flames produce carbon dioxide me, uh, and that type of gas. And you must just have as little as possible, uh, uh, you know, if you can. But uh, so we are being kept dumb by uh, proposing uh, uh, very elaborate and expensive solutions, while there is course a much smarter way to go about creating the same circumstances as we would have at the peak of our oil availability and that's the essence of the whole story is that if we have uh, energy and, and fuel we don't have to do that much work because we can let machines do the work for us and engines do the work for us and that makes our lives very very pleasant of course because we can sit back and enjoy the labor of the machines. And that's why we need oil so much, because our whole economy is based on the fact that we don't really have to work uh, to, do, to get things done. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's just being smart. But the problem is that we're destroying our planet with it. So there has to be an alternative. And if you look at nature, right now agriculture is in danger because of peak oil. Because if there's no fuel, you can make no fert fertilizer, you cannot plow the land, you don't have the machines, you have all, all that work that the fuel does for us, uh, we need to do ourselves if we don't find an alternative. And in the end, if we don't do the work, then we don't have the food. So we'll have big famines if there's no solution. And if people are inflexible and try to keep working with the fossil fuel solution. And of course there is an alternative, that's ammonia. It's nature's fuel, it is fertilizer, it is uh, what uh, is in manure, it's what's very stinky in the uh, and it's produced in massive amounts every year. And you ba can basically burn it. Uh, you can burn it. Uh, it's a, this is the molecule. It's called nitrogen, which is the food for the plants. That's what all the biological <coughs> organisms need. Not us. We don't like it that much. But all, our pla all the plants, all the things that grow need nitrogen. Because it's the only way it's made available to them. Uh, it's, it's in the atmosphere in uh, massive amounts. But uh, that's not available to the plants. So... Nitrogen the plants need and hydrogen is pure energy. So it's basically, uh, you can burn it, it turns into water, it's not a greenhouse gas, it's clean, etc. People always focus on the nitrogen oxide that's, uh, that's produced when you, uh, you, you burn uh, ammonia, but uh, you can avoid that. That's, that. There's a solution to that. And here's an example of a, of a, of a more recent uh, ammonia-driven car, and it's really scare tactics going on, because they have this pickup truck, and they have this huge tank, and it looks like a hydrogen tank, like it's going to explode, but of course there's liquid ammonia in there. And uh, already in the 80s, people just put ammonia in the gas tank of the car and drove around with it, because uh, ammonia burns pretty, pretty, uh, pretty well, you can imagine, of course, mostly hydrogen. And here you can see the energy content of ammonia, it's quite high, it's not as high as gasoline, it's a little bit less, it has lots of hydrogen of course, and almost no, it has no carbon at all, so the hydrogen content is higher, but uh, you can basically use it. But of course, the oil companies produced bulky scare propaganda, and the first hydrogen car, which was made in the 80s, was also suppressed by uh, the oil lobby. Thank them, I think you should string them all up. Uh, so here's the ammonia energy again. The black uh, is the energy content, and if you know that the energy content is, is not that much less than gasoline, then you know, know that you need about the same amount of liters in your tank. And here's the ammonia production of livestock in the, in, in the US, in tons. 701 billion tons of ammonia, if you take 8% of the tonnage of manure that they produce. That's quite a lot. Uh, that all that tonnage of ammonia, over most of that, it just ran off in the rivers and it's killing the sea and it's uh, uh, yeah, atrophicating uh, the lakes. Here you can see what happens, you get an algae bloom. And you can of course harvest the algae and burn them, but then of course you're burning a lot of carbon, uh, carbon again. And that's not what you want if you want to save the planet. So 
it's basically wasted. Why is it wasted? Because the oil companies discourage farmers from using ammonia as fuel. They're now thinking about it, it's, it's a different chain theory, basically looking at how do we produce ammonia. These are all our factories with which we produce, produce ammonia from fossil fuels. Yeah, and which we then waste on our land and run off in the rivers and we just don't use it anymore. Uh, uh, how are we going to cope if the oil runs out? That's what they're thinking now. How are we going to manufacture ammonia if the, if, if the oil runs out? We need renewable energies. Wow, finally, finally that's amazing. How intelligent. Um, well of course, they should use the ammonia and the manure and they should not let it run off like that. Just that's, that's the basic intelligence at work. But uh, anyway, so thinking oil independence, think ammonia, focus on it, focus on using ammonia. You can basically buy uh, the stuff, put it in your gasoline tank and, and run your car on it and then you will be clean. You will not be producing any, uh, uh, any carbon emissions. So that would be very good. Anyway, that's my uh, Sunday uh, uh <laughs> production. Uh, so thinking oil independence means thinking ammonia and focus on all that, that ammonia that's been wasted by the farmers. <laughs>